So anybody that plays around with scripting on Linux has probably run into this problem where you're trying to design a script that launches a terminal, runs the command in that terminal, and then having the terminal immediately close after running the command. That's usually not what you want. You want the terminal to open, you want it to run the command, and you want it to stay open so you can see the output of the command. Let me switch over to my desktop. Let me show you this problem in action. If I run alacrity-e, let me zoom way in here, dash e, it's going to open a second instance of alacrity and do a cat of my slash etsy pass wd file. You know, it just ran that. It opened an alacrity terminal and it catted that information to the terminal and as soon as it finished the cat, the process is complete so it terminates the alacrity window how can i force that thing to stay open well you know this is going to vary on different terminal emulators for example many terminal emulators like xterm i know have a uh, like a dash hold flag uh, where it'll hold the window open potentially for some things alacrity also has uh, some kind of hold feature as well you can always try to use some of the um, uh, built-in shell commands such as uh, no hang up uh, there's some other things you can try to do but none of these are great for the most part now all of them are going to work a little differently you know depending on uh, what you're trying to do but I thought a neat way to actually solve this problem through the magic of scripting is you know at the end of whatever it is you're trying to run as far as a shell command in that second terminal you know have it also run an additional command that doesn't ever complete it just hangs you know something maybe a loop or something that just sits there until you do something to terminate it so that got me thinking why not just use a read prompt for example uh, I could do something like the basic uh, read you know I, I could do something like this read dash p for prompt press enter to continue and if I run that um, well fish is going to complain I'm in the fish shell here uh, read is a shell built in and fish's read built in function is different than bash's read built-in function so let me specify that I want to run this with bash so bash dash C and then read dash P press enter to continue run that nothing happens right until I press enter to continue and then I I'm done and if I actually add this to that alacrity command so let me up arrow back to alacrity dash E and we need to specify bash dash C and then let's go ahead and wrap this let's do cat our etsy pass wd file and then semicolon and then also run the read dash p and then let's do single quotes because i'm already using double quotes uh on the outside of this statement so single quotes uh press enter to continue and then last single quote last double quote and if i did this correctly we're gonna open a terminal it correctly cats my etsy pass wd and at the bottom it says press enter to continue so it holds the window open so i can actually see the output from that command if i hit enter now the terminal goes away so that's pretty cool i, I think this is a useful enough little trick that i actually want to script this i want to put this in a script that i can reuse for multiple commands you know i, I don't want to necessarily always do a, a cat of a file or you know anything like that you know i want to be able to uh, make this whatever command I want to enter. So let's go ahead and create a script. I'm going to call this script stay. So I'm going to vim stay and it's a bash script. So let's go ahead and put the shebang here at the top. So crunchbang slash user bin env space bash. And then let's go ahead and add the uh, whatever it is we're running. So I'm going to use alacrity for my terminal. If you're using a different terminal, then, you know, name of terminal, X term or console, whatever it happens to be, dash E. And then remember, let's go ahead and specify bash. Uh, even though this is a bash script, it probably isn't necessary to specify bash dash C, but I'm going to put it there anyway. And then let's go ahead and do our double quotes here. And this would be where the command that we're going to run would be and then the semicolon and then the read prompt so read dash p and then in single quotes press enter to continue i can type and of course command this is not going to be command what we want that to be is user input so user input uh let's do a dollar sign one now dollar sign one would be the first argument that somebody enters so if i clear the screen and let's ch mod uh, 755 stay let's make it executable here now when i run stay and then i have to give it an argument for example ls 
It opens, and a Lacrity terminal runs the ls command. It doesn't immediately close, so I get to see the output from the ls, and then press enter to continue. And that's exactly what it's supposed to do. Now, if I wanted to specify ls downloads, my downloads directory, for example, you know, I could do that, but it runs an ls on my home directory, not the downloads directory, uh, it, it kind of ignores that because what I would have to do is actually wrap this in quotes because the script was our first argument and it sees ls and then space and then downloads as two different arguments. So this would be dollar sign one, this would be dollar sign two. So to actually make it all dollar sign one, I'd have to wrap it in quotes there. And now I actually get a proper ls of my downloads directory. Now. I don't want to have to wrap things in quotes. I think that's unnecessary typing. So what I want is I want the entire argument that I write to be seen as one argument, uh, basically, so I don't have to write those quotes. So what I'm going to do, let's go ahead and get back into the file. And instead of dollar sign one, a better way to do this would be dollar sign asterisk. So dollar sign star. So now it's going to treat everything I write as uh, one argument. So ls downloads without the single quotes now should actually be a ls of my downloads directory and that's exactly what it is. So already the script kind of does what I want it to do but let's clean it up a little bit. There's a couple of little niceties I think that would make this better. So uh, the commands we're running right now we're running whatever command I enter and then we're running the prompt but in between the prompt, I think I also want to run this command here. Uh, let's go ahead and add some coloring. So T put and then set AF, so set the uh, the foreground. Let's do color five, so whatever your five terminal color, you know, you got a 16 color terminal color scheme, whatever color number five happens to be with your color scheme, that's what we're gonna color. We're also gonna make it bold and then semicolon. So now we're running three commands, the command you enter, and then we're setting the terminal colors to a different color from the default color. That way when the read prompt happens, it's a different color and it's also bold. Uh, I've made videos about how to use T put to uh, color fonts. It's very useful in scripting. And let's actually see this in action. Let me run uh, stay and this, let me do a little bit bigger output. So let's do the cat, uh, actually let's do my cat bash RC and it runs the cat bash RC and at the bottom press enter to continue is now my fifth terminal color which happens to be purple and it's bold and that you know visually it stands out what to do next especially if this was a script that you know somebody else was going to you know, accidentally run at some point they may not know what the hell just happened why is this terminal here uh, what did it do what do I need to do next well it's obvious press enter to continue because I added that coloring. Now I also don't want people to have to always press enter because some people will naturally want to hit escape. You know, they think escape would get you out of that window, but escape in this case does nothing, right? Q in terminal programs often quits. That does nothing here. You have to hit enter. So I want to solve that problem. So if I get back into our stay script, one other thing I could change is the read prompt here. So read dash P press enter to continue. How about let's change that to press any key and then to continue really just press any key to exit. And then Let's add two new flags to this read command. Let's add dash s. Dash s turns off the terminal echo. So when I hit whatever key I hit, it actually doesn't echo it uh, to the output, which is, you know, a nice thing not to do. And then I'm going to give it this flag here, dash n space one, or you could do dash n no space one. They both work. Um, but dash n one, what this does is it reads a single byte. So Anything you do on the keyboard is a byte, one byte. Any character you hit will be a one byte character and that will trigger the read prompt to exit in this case. So let's write and quit and then let me up arrow and I'm going to run stay and then cat.bashrc and now it cats my bash rc and press any key to exit. And now if I hit escape, that works. If I hit Q, that works. If I hit anything on the keyboard, space, backspace, any letter, number, it doesn't matter. All of that will kill that window now. And now that I've got that 
pretty much set to where I want it. Let's actually test this for some other things. Let me do a system update. So I'm going to do a do as pacman-syu. It's going to open the terminal. It's going to ask me for my do as password, of course. And then it's going to run a pacman SYU, it may find some things to update. I'm not going to take this update, so I'm going to decline that update. I'm going to answer no to that question. And then it says, OK, press any key to exit. And I hit enter. So there you have it, you know, very simple little solution to what has really been a decades old problem is, you know, this annoying problem where you try to open a second terminal, have it run a shell command so you can get the output from some command like a cat or ls or whatever it happens to be. But then, you know, the terminal immediately closes after it executes that command. And now using this read prompt, it's a little bit of a hacky solution to what uh, is, again, a problem that has been plaguing a lot of us uh, scripters on Linux for a long time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add this little script to my dot .files repository on my GitLab so you guys can check it out. You guys can modify it, play with it, you know, uh, change it to your liking. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, Steve, 40 millimeter, Kep K. Mandarloff, Lee, Jersey Killer, Mark, Methos, Arian, Paul, Peace Arch and Vidor, Realities for Less, Red Profit, Roland, Morgento, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick little scripting exercise would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen and all these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, want to see more videos about Linux, free and open source software, and bash scripting, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.